so, and I, it will be an honor. <laughs> okay. I will let be honored. Just, let me just go to your uh, CV so that then I'll need to introduce you. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, let's start broadcasting. Yes, okay. let's go. Okay, we are. Uh, do you want to do any Facebook Live or YouTube Live? Facebook what? I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Uh, I want to want to broadcast this on Facebook or YouTube Live? Along uh, with it's up way. to you. I don't know what you are used to doing. I uh, don't YouTube know. For is me, better. it's okay. YouTube is better okay. because that will be safe. So I would do it on YouTube, no problem. Okay. Yep. Okay. For me, it's okay. Just a minute. Give me two seconds. And sure. Because today we actually we have a capacity of 500 and we have more than 600 registration now. You are very popular. <laughs> <laughs> People like Brazilian guys. <laughs> yeah. We had a lot of Brazilians uh, webinars. Uh, in fact, I was uh, having uh, doc three doctors four people uh, for push uh, orthodontics that is for clear correct dr daniel nevis then uh, uh -huh. doctor uh, uh, the other people also there okay let me we will talk okay broadcasting okay we are live Okay, so let me put here in the screen just in order to wait people get in and yes. see how things go. Okay. How is the weather today in your country? Weather is a little hot. We have around 40 plus degree temperature. Wow. <laughs> 40 <laughs> too hot for me <laughs> I know. here in my city we never reach 40 we just saw uh, 29 30 30 something but never 40 it's oh, too wow. hot huh? okay <laughs> hello everybody thank you dr kleber Merlis, for joining in from all the way from brazil uh, yeah. We have Dr. Uh, Kleber, Professor Kleber Merlis from Brazil, and he will be talking on the use of bands and loops for refinement of occlusion. That's what the finishing is. So, uh, like the uh, a proverb which says that it's not over till it's over. I would refine, and I would say that it's not over until you refine it. So. Uh, Dr. Kleber would teach you how to refine the occlusion finally for finishing your treatment. And uh, uh, let me just brief you about Dr. Kleber. Uh, he's a specialist in orthodontics, University of Sao Paulo, in Brazil. He's a master's degree in orthodontics from Uniarasa, Sao, Sao Paulo, Brazil. He's coordinating professor of the specialization program in orthodontics. Institute of Prime Bahia, Brazil, and he's an international speaker. So, and uh, he, his main area is, I think he loves biomechanics and a lot of innovations. So without wasting much of the time, over to you, Dr. Kleber. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Okay, thank you very much for inviting me. I, so I'm honored to be here with you today. Uh, all of you this Monday, beautiful Monday here in Brazil. I hope everything goes right with our connection. Usually goes. <laughs> yes. And uh, I'd like to thank all of you for being here, for joining us today. I'm going to, to talk about uh, this, as AJ said, the use of bands and loops for refinement uh, of occlusion and hope some, uh, some information that I share with you today will be for, of use for you in your clinic, in your day-to-day -day practice. So let's begin. Uh, here is our old map, and here is where I live, just to show you how far we are one from each other. I uh, live here in this part of Brazil, which is called Bahia. Let me just grab something here to show it to you. Okay. Okay. And here is Salvador. This is my city. I love to live here. It's a very beautiful place to live. 
uh, beautiful weather. Let's go on. And this is a panoramic view of my city. As you can see it here, it's uh, a home for almost three million and a half people. It's a colorful city, as you can see in some pictures here. This is a part, an, an old part of the city, which is called Pelourinho, a Baroque area of Brazilian uh, uh, heritage from the colonization of Portugal. And here we see a place that is well known here in my city, is one of the best landscapes to take pictures. It's called uh, ba uh, Barra Lighthouse. We call it in Portuguese Farol da Barra. It's very well known here in Brazil. And this is an odd situation. As you can see, it's uh, an empty beach. Usually this beach here is crowded people everywhere and the, the, uh, taking bath in the sea and here in the, the sand. But in this pandemic situation that we are facing now, we have this empty landscape, which is very sad. But uh, I think soon we'll get back to our normal activities and we'll show this picture with more people for you in another situation. So uh, just for you to see how far we are from each other, here we are in Bahia and far from here, we have you there in India. And this is something amazing for me to, to, to have the opportunity to get in contact with people all around the world and be able to, to talk, to, to share information. This is something that changed in this pandemic situation now. And for me, it's amazing because uh, I had the opportunity to, to give some lectures around the world, but these days it's very, very, it's beautifully um, connected. And this is something that is, I think it's due to this pandemic situation. We have more webinars, we have more uh, gathering of orthodontists. Of, of course, I'm saying about orthodontists because we are orthodontists. So this is something that I can see these days. And here's my wife. She was in India like uh, three or four months ago. She went to a trip with some colleagues of her and she went to, to take pictures and she took really thousands <laughs> of pictures and she showed me all of them. And I, I grew in love with India uh, seeing those pictures, lovely pictures, lovely people and places that I, I you know, of course know much better than I. There are very, very, very uh, beautiful places like here in Taj Mahal. As you can see here, this is her taking her uh, tourist picture <laughs> in this, this very beautiful spot and a very well-known spot. So uh, let's begin with our lecture today, the use of bands and loops for refinement of occlusion. And that's uh, something important that I show uh, every beginning of my lectures, this, this image here, which stands for this situation. If you have, a, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like an A. What, it, what does it mean for me? Well, I'm not here today to teach you another way to do orthodontics. Of course, you are well, you are uh, orthodontist and you know well your, uh, your profession. I just want to show you the way I do things in my office and the way I teach to my students how to do things to do the refinement of the occlusion. So if you grab just things that I say, and, and of course, during this lecture, you see many things that you not agree with. You just, you think it's crazy. Why did he do like this? He would have done the other way and, and it's possible. And it's very common to see this in the internet. I'm here today, I'm a very seasoned uh, internet person and I know that people do this. You see just a picture or a video of, of anyone and you just think, well, I would do this thing that he did differently. Uh, for me, it won't work this way. And it's okay, you can do your way. All I want here is to show my way. So if I, I have the opportunity to, to show you something that you will use in a, a, a particular situation in your office, I will be pleased. And this is something that uh, is going to be very well for everyone, my wife. <laughs> so let's move on, uh, bends and loops. Bands, uh, as you know, are made in order to correct the positioning of a tooth of a group of teeth in three planes of space, and they are named according to the movement they impose on the teeth. So we call them first order band, second order bands, or third order bands, which we know the stork 
it is stored. So I'm going to try to do everything in this short time we have. Uh, of course, summarizing everything. And uh, for a start, we, I'd like to say that Night High Wire may not be completely efficient to tackle some nuance of poor dental position. We know that as orthodontists, that sometimes you have that crowded uh, teeth in the anterior part of the, the lower arch, for example, and we keep going keep, and keep uh, 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 moving our, our arch wires to a thicker arch wire, and we don't see the alignment going well. Sometimes a teeth, uh, a tooth, it is a stubborn tooth that stay, stays in its position, and it's difficult to tackle this nuance with a night tie wire. Night tie wire. So sometimes we use bands, we use loops for that, and I'm gonna try to show you how I do things in my office. So this is the first order band. This is just a Z band, first order Z band, which we use uh, very frequently here in our office, in our, uh, in our courses, and it's used for ro derotate a tooth, for example. The, so the second order bands, they are done in the vertical uh, aspect of the wire, so this is a step down band for example and we have the third order band which is the torque that we know well as orthodontists okay but before we do these bands we have to understand that we can avoid some of them if we take if we pay enough attention in the beginning of treatment concerning to the the, diag the diagnosis and the treatment planning and do the things with a uh, certain care in the beginning, like bonding, for example, okay? Finishing orthodontics begins with the bonding of the brackets. It's something important for us to understand because when you put the, in the right position, you avoid some bands. You will not completely avoid them and every time, but sometimes you can just skip of them and go straight, uh, just changing the wires from the beginning to the end of the treatment uh, without the need of doing these bands. You should pay enough attention in height and angulation. If you do this uh, change bracket height in some cases, that are special cases, which I'm trying to show you in a few slides, change angulation in special cases to centralization of accessories of brackets. Uh, when, when you do this decentralization in class two or class three cases, as McNamara told us and taught us a uh, long time ago, it is possible for you to uh, to do the correction easily. Avoid excess of compost. Of course, it is important because you can do with excess of both uh, of compost uh, and the basis of your brackets. You can do this inset band without the need of that. So we have to pay attention. You have to use your mirror to see if you have some excess and remove this excess before like killing uh, the, the, the compost. So one thing that is important when putting the bracket in position is to understand that we have a certain amount, a certain amount of exposure that is expected to see in a resting position. And this is important to put the brace in position in order to do the step and the exposure of these edges of the, the upper arch teeth. So when we do this, and we know that we have to keep in mind that some that, 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 that are differences between male and female. And for example, for males expect, they think, we as male think it's attractive to show at maximum two millimeters. I, I don't think so. I like to show more than two millimeters because I know that with aging, these things change. And with the male and concerning to female, they like more exposure. So when you see papers dealing with the attractiveness of the smile arch, attractiveness of the the exposure in a rest position, they say that this is what in average people want. But I say this, this is something that is very personal. I always see that, it's very personal. People, uh, if you ask, ask for your patient what she or he would like to expose, would like to show in a rest position, you see many different, many different answers about this. Some people want to show more, some people want to show less. So what I do is just ask them and show some pictures of nice smiles and nice lips in a rest position and try to speak to them to make them understand that we can do this, of course, with limitations, but we can do this change in the position of the teeth according to the lip 
We can do it orthodontically, we can do it surgically, we can do it with harmonization or facial harmonization. So we have a lot of skills, a lot of uh, uh, tools to do that in our armamentarium. So this is what I do. I show my patients what is the average, what people usually, usually is, uh, think is the average they want to show and ask them, what do you want? So I know, and we all know that with time, we change this amount of exposure. Here we see in this paper that uh, with increasing age, the amount of maxillary anterior teeth that was visible at rest decreased, <coughs> decreased and the opposite was true. The mandibular anterior teeth showed more. So this is something that we expect to have with aging. So in my thinking, uh, when I do the treatment planning, I put this in the, this to, to balance how much of exposure I have to, to have at, in, in, at the end of the treatment, knowing that with age, it will change. So sometimes I have an exposure that I may think it is a little bit of excess of exposure, but I keep that in that situation because I know that with 10 years, 20 years ahead, it will uh, uh, change dramatically. So I, I tend to uh, preserve this amount of exposure, okay? So I have here a picture of uh, a lady uh, in a rest position. And this is the picture that I take, take from my patients to show them what's the, the right, what's the position they have and how can I manage this for them? So this is the, the, uh, the situation that I show. This is zero millimeter of exposure. And here we go increasing the exposure. And this is something that's not that hard to do when you know how to deal with the, the Photoshop. And you can show to your patient that you, you can do this change for him or her. You can do this more or less exposure according to the treatment planning and according to their uh, desire, they expect what they expect from uh, the treatment, okay? Two millimeters and we go for more exposure here. We have three millimeters here and we go to something that people usually don't like, four millimeters of exposure, especially because we show the canines in this situation. That's not beautiful and not attractive at all. I think so. I don't know if you think you agree with me, but if I put these uh, pictures here for you to choose, I think most people would choose between the number one and number four. Uh, keep that in mind. And at the end of our presentation, if you want to ask me to address some questions about that, I'll be pleased to answer uh, my way of thinking, okay? So I tend to, to, to like more exposure. I like like four, for me it's okay, for me it's really beautiful. Uh, three, I think it's too much, but sometimes people like this kind of exposure. So uh, this is something that we can change. And we know that sometimes we have too much of exposure. Of course we have it. And, and this kind of treatment planning goes to a more difficult treatment planning most every time with the uh, inclusion of the surgery on the process. Okay, so this is the, the, the uh, amount of exposure that I think is too much. In a rest position, you show all the, uh, the whole incisor, essential incisor, and an amount of the uh, gingival uh, tube, also an amount of the gingival uh, portion, okay? So another thing that we can change, this is important for, our, for us just to, to understand that we can change in the beginning of the process during the bone phase of our treatment, bone in our brackets, we can change this, this step between the central and the lateral incisor, the edges, the tips of the lateral and central incisors, and they make this beautiful step, which is uh, thought attractive for most of, uh, the, most of women. Some men don't like it, but I think it's attractive for anyone. Let's see just this video here and uh, see how it goes for you. So we have here beautiful steps, even though some teeth are not perfect aligned, we have these steps, and I think this is very sensual. This is very beautiful, especially for women, but for men, but also for men. And we see this uh, almost flat uh, uh, step, which I don't like much. And sometimes I show to my patient if they want to go to the step. I want this step. Here in Brazil, we have a very well-known actress, which, which is called Xuxa. 
that has this huge step between central and lateral, and people tend to, uh, to say this. I like Shusha's smile, I like that huge central incisor, and I like to have that for me. So you can do this just in the boning, putting the braces uh, or brackets in different heights, concerning to the central of the, 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 the tooth. And doing that, we can do this change just nicely uh, changing our arch wire sequences and doing it from the uh, lighter wire to the thicker wires. We can do this step. And of course, as I mentioned before, we have to ask our patients what his or her preference is, okay? So we have both position, both situation, and we have to put it all together. We can do this like uh, doing step, doing more or less exposure of central and lateral incisors. So before we start, before we just put our bases in position, we have to keep in mind that this is something that comes first. We have to think, in, think it forward, we have to plan forward in order to, uh, to do less bend at the end of our treatment. So we put all together in our treatment planning and we choose the position that we're going to place our brackets. And this is important for us since the beginning of our treatment, okay? So as I said before, the finishing starts in the beginning of the treatment when you put your braces in position. So something that's not acceptable, uh, though we think uh, I, I, I might prefer more or less a step, something is not acceptable. It's the asymmetry between one side and the other side of the, the, this, this step. So sometimes you have a higher step, a huge step in one, in one side and a very small step on the other side. So what do I do in the situation? Of course, this is something that I missed during the, the, the position of the bracket. I put in a wrong position, one side related to the other side, and I had to ask my patient in this, this time of the treatment, when I saw the difference, which one did she prefer, the, last, uh, the left or the right in, uh, lateral incisor? And she told me, Kleber, I prefer this step here. She's a colleague of ours, she's an orthodontist, and she told me that she would prefer, oh, I'm sorry, she would prefer this step here. And what I did was a nice band just to do what he asked me. Here is the band, a very light band in a rectangular wire. And then we have the correction of the positioning of, of the position of this tooth here, okay? Another thing that is important and we can change with our uh, BRAC positioning is the gingival exposure and the amount of exposure of each teeth. So the zenith, the higher position of the gingival, and it, each teeth is very beautiful and do this kind of a beautiful uh, exposure of at most three millimeters. But I tend to like more exposure, I told you before. Here is the two nice ladies, two fine ladies, beautiful ladies. This one here is my daughter, Julia, and this is my mother, Vanda. So they have different exposures and it's expected for the age, okay? I know that you know that with aging, we show less, we show less gingiva during smile, we show less teeth during uh, our rest and in our rest position, and it's okay, it's okay. We don't want to change we don't want to change this because we have to respect the age. So if I changed this, what do you think would happen? What would happen? I would give a smile completely different from the age for each one of her. So this is not something that we want to do. We, are, we want to preserve it. Because this is, there's this quote that I love to see. It's aging gracefully is better than keeping, uh, let me just remove it, yes keeping up a facade of eternal youthfulness, youthfulness. So this is something that we have to keep in mind. We don't want to change uh, our, our patients, showing a very different situation for them of the age, the exposure. So it, this is not something that, oh, I'm sorry, here. This is not something that we want to do. We want to keep in mind that uh, age is important for our decision in treatment planning, okay? So let's take Julia with her smile and Vanda, my mother, with her smile. So this is something that we have to keep in mind too. Uh, another thing that we can change is the, uh, the height of the zenith, the height of this higher portion of the, 
the, the, the gingiva. In this position here, we know that uh, for people, the attractiveness of these curves goes like this. We can have the central incisor at, at the height of the canine and the lateral incisor like half millimeter or one millimeter, uh, half millimeter or more than that below the central incisor and canine zenith lines, okay? Gingival lines. And we can change this. And let's see this in this first case here. Uh, this is Yuri, my brother-in-law, and he's a very, very uh, beautiful guy, handsome guy, but he has this position, which he didn't like, had other things to treat, more other than this, but this is something that the first at glance of this case, we see the situation here. Let me show you in another picture. We have this difference in height between central incisors. So we have one central incisor higher than the other one. Why did it happen? With uh, the wear of the tip of this incisor, the, the, the his left incisor, we have the eruption, the passive eruption of this teeth, and it carries the gingival margin together with it. So when it goes down, the gingival margin goes down too. And we know that when you do it, and of course, do it slowly, we can bring the gingival margin together with our movement of intrusion or extrusion. So we have here the situation that we have to, to correct. And in order to correct, we can put the braces since the beginning in a different position, a special position, just in order to correct this position of the gingival margin. And of course, you can uh, choose to do an uh, excisional removal of this gingival margin here, but there are different uh, indications for those different approaches. For example, if we had here a pocket, a uh, death pocket of this, this gingival uh, margin here, we of course should do this, uh, uh, this removal of this, this gingival with, uh, 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 surgically, periodontally speaking, but in this case, this place here, this pocket here, there was no pocket here, the depth of the, the probe was correct, was normal. So we chose to do different. We chose to intrude this tooth in order to, uh, to, to uh, put the gingival margin at the same level here, okay? So how can we deal with this? We can just put the braces in different position, in different position, just thinking of the difference in the gingival margin. So if I have here like one millimeter of difference in height, I will preserve this, this, uh, this one millimeter or two millimeters, wherever we see here during the, the this first procedure, that is the bonding uh, phase of our treatment planning. So we put the braces in different heights, just in order to align those teeth, align those marks, gingival margins, during the sequence of arch wire uh, changes, okay? So we can do this since the beginning, doing this kind of uh, this, uh, displacing the, the, the bracket from its central position to another position just in order to do this during the alignment and without the need of doing this later or avoiding the need of doing this much, much later and too much in a later phase of our treatment plan. So this is what we do. And here is Yuri. Uh, as you can see, he has here a deciduous canine and he has this amount of uh, narrow upper arch, which we did uh, with the expansion, surgical expansion. But I didn't want to show this, just want to show you this position. And it was not enough. So during the treatment, I did another band in order to do this nice leveling of the uh, the gingival margin. So this is something that we can do during our treatment. If we're not satisfied with the height, the height that we achieved with the, bonding, the, the, the position of the bracket during the bonding, we can change this with this kind of bending. This is a uh, step up bend. And now we have this gingival margin with uh, a level, leveled and line, aligned. And now it's all right and we can do this finishing of this case. So here is Yuri at the end of the treatment, and here is the gingival margin that the gingival margin that you can see 
it's together with the other gingival margin, it's leveled, and it's now with the uh, right height, okay? So here is usually like two or three years, I don't remember, two or three years after treatment, uh, keeping that position, and here is beauty and uh, his gingival margin kept the position and when we compare before and after treatment and this is as i said two or three years after the bone we have this gingival margin keeping its height okay and here is beauty in his smile and when we compare before and after uh, we have and uh, now this difference okay another thing that we can do look how important it is to do this treatment plan in advance so when you are going to put the brakes the braces in position you have to understand what is going to be your mechanics for that case in this case for example i wanted in order to do the, the, the space closure here i was going to have a huge uh, movement of premolars and molars, molars forward, premolars backwards, and this is going to change the position, the angulation of those teeth. So in order to avoid this, I have to keep in mind that if I, my treatment plan goes this way, closing the space, I have to understand that it is expected to have a, a, a change in angulation of those teeth. And in order to do this in advance, I can do it forward i can just just adjust the position the angulation of those teeth the angulation of those braces during the positioning in order to avoid that this much of unwanted side effects so what we do in the situation let's see in the graphics here what happens uh, this is the positioning oh, i'm sorry uh, this is a, uh, a video and i i passed it without the name let's see the video running uh, here we have the, the space and here we have the space closed and uh, here what happened in this graphic we are going to see what is our thinking in this kind of treatment planning here we have the height the bone height as you can see there's the defect here and we know by the works of Horvitz and others uh, researchers that we can gently move this tooth this teeth to the disposition bringing together the bone so here what we do here is just to change the position the angulation of the tube and the angulation of the braces and we have to keep in mind also we have to keep in mind that we're going to do this torque in order to do the right uh, treatment uh, mechanics here we have a five degree tube uh, which here in brazil we use too much a rough tube five degrees of angulation and if we did this in this patient we would do a, 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 a very bad work for us because it, will, it would enhance the angulation during the space closure because it's already five degrees. What we do is the opposite. We change this five degrees for zero degrees braces and we do this counterclockwise this counterclockwise rotation, as you can see here, in order to avoid the moments generated during the space closure. So we have a counter moment that counteracts that moment of the movement, generated during the movement. Same thing here, we change the angulation of those braces in order to counteract the moment generated during the space closure. Another thing to, to, to avoid the loss of the inclination, of course, is dealing with torque. We can either use the active torque, the passive torque, or the resistant torque. If the, breath, the, the tooth is the teeth is well positioned, we can use the resistant torque for that. And we can gently close the space, bringing together the bone during this space closure. So in order to avoid many, many uh, bends during the treatment, we can do it in advance. We plan our treatment doing this kind of change of angulation or torque or positioning of our braces in order to avoid the need for doing much much bends not that i don't like bends i love bends but it takes it, it's time consuming so we want to do it quickly because we have uh, in our treatment the need of uh, seeing many patients during the day so the less the bends the more uh, efficient the treatment will be okay so we have here the 
end of the treatment and the debonding phase. And we have here uh, our result of the treatment before and after. And we have occlusal view, occlusal view, before and after everything. And here we have the end of the treatment, okay? So this is something that we can do in advance. We can plan. We can think about our mechanics and we can, can counteract the side effects, the unwanted side effects of our mechanics during this change in the angulation of our brackets and the positioning of our brackets in order to avoid the need for many, many bands during our treatment time, okay? Another example of doing this thinking forward before treatment, before the placement of our brackets, what can do in a situation like this, which is a, a genesis of lateral incisor, and we plan to close the space. Of course, you can see here, it's much more efficient for us to close the space since the, the molar is almost in its final position and it's easier for us to close the space than to open the space because to open the space, well, we would have to either extract or distalize molars and premolars to get this, that space. I know there is a very a huge debate about this kind of uh, treatment planning. Uh, our periodontists tend to not to, to accept and, and people who do this, uh, um, uh, uh, like this, um, how can I say it, crowns in and prosthetic treatments, they tend not to agree with us with closing the space. That's what I mean, I'm sorry. We tend to, I, I, I my, myself, I tend to close the space most of the time. Because if we, if we have my, my kids, I would try to close this space because I don't want to, I know that the implants are very efficient and we can put those implants in a very nice position and we can keep it all uh, uh, our lifetime. But sometimes they don't work well. And if I have the opportunity to close the space, to put the contact, the right contact of the animal with the gingival margin, I prefer to do that. So just to explain why I close the space. So uh, in this situation, closing the space, of course, the canine will be in place of lateral incisor at the end of the treatment. So what can we do to resemble the lateral incisor in this position, the canine in the position of the lateral incisor? What can we do to put it in the position? And people don't see that it is a canine. We can do this dealing with the gingival margin, either the gingival margin, and the tips, all those teeth. And we have to do some adjustment in this kind of treatment planning in order to avoid or in order to, to uh, lower the need for doing this band, uh, these bands during the treatment. So what can we think in this situation? What can we change in this situation in order to uh, do a smooth treatment without the need for so many bands during this, this time? Uh, we can change the position of the, the bracts of the canine. What I do is to use the bracts the, the, the bract of the canine and the canine, and I put it upside down. Why? Because I use uh, Roth or Andrew's prescription for my braces. And when I do that, I'm changing the inclination, the third uh, uh, P of Andrew's, the inclination of those teeth, just putting the uh, rectangular wire there because as we know the lateral incisor has a positive inclination and the canine it has a negative inclination so when do we do this we put the break the brackets upside down we change for negative to a positive inclination of the canine another thing to do is to put the bracket more gingivally to position it more gingivally in order to gentle gently extrude that teeth uh, together with its gingival margin, because we know, I showed it before, and you know that, the gingival margin of the lateral incisor is lower than the central and the canine gingival margin. So we put, put in this more gingival will extrude during treatment. So this is what's going to happen, and this is this, and here we have the, what happened during this procedure. Another thing we have to keep in mind, so here's, uh, showing the canine, the bract of the canine, and I always put the bract of the canine more mesial in order to do this rotation and to have 
this nice position between lateral uh, canine and lateral, or in this case, or central incisor. So this is the bracket of the canine upside down. Of course, I removed the, the hook and here, and another thing that we have to keep in mind that is, is that the position of the molar, because if you are going to change, if you're going to just close the space without extraction in the lower arch, you are going to finish your molar in a solid class two full cusp, okay? Because we have four premolars down and two premolars up. So this is what we do. I change the position of the, the tube and I choose another tube. I don't choose the five degree tube for here. I choose the zero degree tube for here during that thing that I showed you before that's putting this angulation counterclockwise here in this situation. Angulation just tending to bring forward the root of this molar. So this is something that I do in advance in order to avoid to doing so much bends during my treatment, treatment time. So this is something important. Changing the molar tube is another thing that is good for us. So here we have uh, this, the, at this point of the treatment, I just did this uh, uh, trim of the, 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 this edge, the tip of the canine, in order for him to, for it to resemble the lateral incisor just before uh, the bonding. So here we have before doing this and after doing this. Here we go with our treatment planning. As you can see, I use lots and lots of bands and loops in my treatment uh, during my treatment, and it's okay. I love to do this here and uh, close to finishing treatment. And here we have the final phase, and I removed, had a relapse here, which I tackled with this kind of uh, situation just a vacuum form plastic uh, retainer here with just two uh, hooks to close the space and the space closed and here i removed uh, the the apparatus okay and here is our friend at the end of treatment her profile and this is something that we did thinking forward think before we do the placement of our break brackets we do this treatment plan Another situation, and here this is a patient that came from my office with these brackets, and uh, after like um, uh, seven years, if I'm not mistaken, seven or eight years of previous treatment, orthodontic treatment. And what happened uh, in this situation is that he had a severe root resorption in his lateral incisors, upper lateral incisors. Uh, I'm going to show you here. This is the previous. Uh, x-rays that he brought to me in my office uh, for his first treatment and it goes on and our colleague in the situation he put the braces on the lateral incisor which is very very dangerous in this moment of the treatment the second uh, transitory period of uh, this intertransitory period actually it's very dangerous to do this because you can press the root of the lateral incisor against the crown of the canine and the root of the lateral incisor will always lose the battle. So in this situation, what happened was a very severe uh, root resorption in the lateral incisor, and you can see here, and this is the moment that came to me. And what I planned to that uh, for this patient is to, in, since he had a class two, I plan to do the extraction of those lateral incisors and do this space closure with a nice and soft uh, upper arch retraction closed in the space. Here we have the lateral size, the, the lateral size removed, already removed. This is just the crown in position just for static purpose. We didn't want to remove and, and, and left that, those holes there. So we just put in place, as you can see here, is the uh, before treatment, and I always do that, I ask for the, 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 the x-rays and the photographs with the, 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 the previous bracts in position without removing it because if I do that, I'm joining the treatment results and I don't want that. So in this case, especially 
it, it uh, the, the result of the the previous treatment was not not that good. So here we have the uh, time that we removed the teeth, those teeth, teeth removed, and here we have those teeth seeing the, the root resorption that we have here. Root resorption in the cervical aspect too, and the apex was completely removed during this resorption. Here the, 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 the crowns in position, just in order to keep them in position, not just to, to, uh, uh, to keep the uh, static uh, in, the, in the smile, and here we have the treatment going forward, closing the space, closing the space. We did this uh, with gentle force and with a lot of time to do this uh, exchange of the, the, the chains, okay? And comes a timer and had to remove the teeth, the crown, and we removed the crown here because it was narrower than the, the space now the bracket now. So in this time we removed and we kept on doing this space closure. So now in this, uh, let me go back, in this uh, treatment period here, this treatment phase here, what I saw is that I, during the, the, the bonding, I didn't put it enough gingivally to do the extrusion. So we had to do this correction in this moment because the space is almost closed and now we can do this bending here. This is an extrusion band that, we, that I put here in this position in order to do this kind of uh, gingival margin adjustment. As you can see, we have now the gingival margin lower in this time here, lower than before. And this is the band that I put. This is the extrusion band that I put here, and the gingival margin, it goes along, it goes together with this extrusion movement in this situation. Same thing on the contralateral incisor, and we have the extrusion, and now we have a gingival margin before the extrusion and after extrusion. As you can see, we have a slight uh, enhanced increase in this exposure of the gingival margin. Okay, so let's move on. So now we know that we can do this, we can avoid bands doing a right treatment planning, uh, doing thinking forward, what, what are we going to do during treatment, uh, what is going to happen with our biomechanics during treatment, and in advance we plan and we counteract, we try to counteract this, the, the negative side effects that are expected to that biomechanics during this kind of adjustment. Just positioning the bracket, more gingival, more uh, in, uh, in, uh, for, for the, the, the tip, more, it depends on the treatment planning, and we can do this kind of uh, angulation that I showed you, and we can change angulation in order to counteract the bad uh, side effects that we don't want to, to have uh, during our mechanics, okay? So, but if we, uh, during mechanics, we see something that's not good and we want to change, it's completely possible. And for that, we have to understand, we have to know the basics of doing bands in orthodontics. I know that to, nowadays people tend to think just fast. I don't want to do bands. I just want to, to uh, do this rebound, the, 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 the brackets, and everything goes right. It's wrong, people. It's wrong, my friends. You won't do this and go right. You have to go backwards when you do the rebounding thing. So when you do just, I saw something wrong during my uh, repo uh, panorex, panorex, like three months after treatment, I saw that this teeth or this uh, root is not well positioned, so I will do the rebound. I just uh, remove the bracket and put another bracket. What, what are we going to have to do in this kind of situation? We are going to have to go backwards in the arch wire sequence. And it's not fair with our patient. What I think is fair to our patient is to do the, bond, the, 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 the bands. And once you have it correct, yes, now you can do the removal of your bracket and you put a bracket in a passive situation with a thicker wire. You don't have to go backwards, you can go forward. 
in your hardware sequence. So this is why I love to do these vents during my treatment time, uh, through my treatment plan. So this is uh, the most used first order vents. We know here we have the Z, first order Z band, and we have here the inset or the step in band, which we use very, very, uh, uh, very much in our treatment, okay? So we have uh, many bands that you can use, first order bands, and I'm gonna show you here the most used uh, first order bands. In situation where we have a pack shaped electroencyte, for example, when you put your base in position, when you put your bracket in position, it tends to go forward, bring it just take the crown without the root. So if you put this in this position and a pack shaped electroencyte, which is uh, thinner than the central and the canine, the neighboring teeth, so we have this teeth going forward. In order to adjust this, we can do this step in band, uh, or we can do step in with torque. That we're going to address at the end of our, our presentation. So this is what we want to change the point of contact here. So we can do this step in band, or less we call the inset band to do this adjustment. If we use a uh, brackets, edgewise brackets, uh, meaning not, bra not programmed brackets like edgewise bracket, we we'll always have to do this because with edgewise bracket, we don't have that compensation that we have in straight wire brackets, in pre-programmed brackets. We have the thickness of the, this bracket base wider in the straight wire bracket in order to tackle this difference here. In the edgewise bracket, of course, we do not have because they are similar. The base is the same base for lateral and central incisor. It's flat. So we have to do it all the time we do. We use bracket, edgewise bracket. And sometimes I lose edgewise. Yes, I'm old fashioned. And sometimes I think they, they tend to uh, help the mechanics. So let's see how we do this step in uh, uh, band in orthodontics. What I teach my students is this way, this way of thinking. First, I do this pressure on the thumb, okay? I do this pressure uh, inwards, uh, putting this plier here, and I always use this plier. I know we have pliers, special pliers for that. They are, uh, they have numbers on it, like half millimeter, one millimeter, two millimeters, and it goes on and on. But I prefer to do this because I have the, the amount of the band that I want to that patient. I do the individualization as much as I can. So when I use this Burbick bird bird uh, plier here, I can manage, I can do the amount of a band that I want to that case. So I use, always use this kind of band. I, I, sometimes I receive presents, I, I, I gain, I, I have presents, I have gifts from some companies that give me these pliers, but I, I always say thank you, but I don't use at all. I use just the 139, is what we call here in Brazil this plier, 139 plier or bird beak plier or jaraba or light wire plier. It has many names around the world. So I do the pressure to do this in band, step in. So we do now the other, in the other part of the, the, the plier, I do the opposite in order to go back to the, uh, the line of the arch. So I do first the in band, now I do the out band. So I use, let me go back here. So I used, oh, I'm sorry. So I used before the thumb for going in, putting the wire, the, 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 the plier, and in a measure aspect of the wire, in measure portion of the wire, then I go out in the distal portion of the wire. Now we have the video for that. Hopefully, it, oh yeah, it's cool. it ran. So here it's how I do. Without removing the plier for its position, I go in and I go out, okay? In and out. Let's see it again. I will put the plier in the position I want and I go in in mesial and I go up distal, okay? So this is the first band. Mesial, I go in, distal, I go out. Huh? Inwards, outwards, okay? This is how I do without the need of removing this plier from its position. 
and we have now the other band. So now you do it different. What I want now is to go back to, to, uh, to buckle, to uh, forward. So first I do, I put the, 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 the plier in position and I put my finger medial and go out now and go distal in. Out, medial, in, distal, okay? Hope it's clear enough for you what I'm saying. Since I can't see your faces now, as we can see when we are good, good doing a presential, a, a live uh, uh, in our classes. If I you can guys can understand that, but... please raise your hand. All of you raise your <laughs> hand so that uh, the Professor Kleber can understand that. Did you see it? Yes, see everybody's raising hands. Very good. Let me take a picture of this. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, so good. many people are raising take a hands. Picture. So many people understand. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, so let's move on. And uh, now we see, um, how can I remove this? Okay, thank you. And uh, now we see how it goes when we do this, when we put the wire in a white paper, in a white paper, for example, or in your a glass slab. I use much the glass slab for that, for seeing the, the passivity of the wire. So we see now that we didn't disturb the nice curvature of the wire. We have just this band here in this portion of the wire, but as you can see, it goes nicely in the same line, in the same line in the medial and the distal portion of the wire. So we have to do that in order not to, 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 uh, to fabricate a band different from what you want. If you don't see this in your uh, wire, you're going to produce a different band, like a, a step in or step down band, step out band in other portion of the wire. And you don't want that. So please do this check before you insert the wire and the braces, okay? So here we have, okay, how we do. And this is what we do. And out band, uh, step out band is the opposite that you see before, that we saw before, huh? Let's do it again. So first I went out, so I put my finger visual, I go out and I go inwards in distal portion of the, the, the plier. So this is like how I do the out bend, okay? It's the opposite of the bend we saw before, we seen before, okay? Now we go back to the, the contour of the arch wire. So we have to go in visual and out distal, in visual and out distal, okay? So we have this band. Sorry, not, was not enough focused. And another band that we use much in this situation is the Z band, the first order Z band. For the rotating tooth, we use the first order Z band. So the first order has a final result, has a final result, an angulation, as you can see here, an angulation of the segment of the wire that will be engaged to the bracket or to the tooth. So different from the other uh, band that we saw before, that we've seen before, we have to keep the angulation here. So how we do this? We do the out band, the in, the in band, and the out band, leaving a angulation in this situation. Yeah? So the next two bands repeat the sequence of the first band, as you can see, because you have to, to have those bands uh, uh, going up, out, equally out, different from the other band, that one's out or the other one in. So we have uh, this different band here that kept the angulation. So as you can see, with the plier still firmly positioned, the wire is pressed buckly in the distal segment. So this is how we do in order to achieve the first order Z band. And here it is. What is important here? To see the wires, the, the continuity of the wire when you do this kind of, uh, this, this kind of band. You don't want to miss this line of the arch wire. Because if you do that, you will fabricate, you will make another kind of wire, another kind of band different from that, that you wanted to do, okay? Notice that the dash line follows the contour of the arch wire. Stay in the medial part of the band below the line and the distal part of the band above it. So we have now a band that is going to rotate 
uh, bringing the distal part of the, the actual the, the distal part of the tooth uh, uh, outward and the mesial part of the tooth inward. So we have to do this rotation in this kind of situation. Okay, and we don't want it at all. If you do that, you have a different band from what you are trying to to construct to fabricate. Okay, this is important for us to see. So before you do the insertion, you have to look very close if the, 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 the band is what you want for it. If the band is doing the movement you want for it. So this is how we do. Before doing the insertion, we check the band. And then, sorry, any question? I'm, I'm hearing something here. No, let's move on. And also we can do this pressure and you can put the arch wire inside the slot in this situation, okay? Yeah, before and after the correction. And here we have uh, a situation where I use this kind of band to correct a, a rotated central incisor, upper central incisor. And for doing this, I tend to use the TMA arch wire. I don't like to use much TMA arch wire in the arch wire. I use the TMA mostly for, for loops, okay, for auxiliary loops. Auxiliary loops are very interesting and they are amazing. We will have the opportunity to do all the auxiliary loops, of course, today, but they are amazing. I'm going to tackle just the, the nuances of the correction. So in this situation here, I did use the TMA arch wire because the stiffness of the rectangular arch wire for doing this kind of correction is huge. And if you do it, try to do this, to put this, this, this band inside the slot, you tend to uh, either break the, bra the bracket, the bracket wings, or do much force to the tooth, which you definitely don't want to do. So please, in this situation, check, check the force before you put it inside the slot. In this situation, I use the TMA arch wire. You can use the, the night tie arch wire for that. You can do bands in arch wire. You can do further than the, its elastic uh, uh, limit, and you do uh, can do the, this band in the night tie arch wire, but it's not it's not stable. It's not easy to do this band and put it stable. So in night tie arch wires, it's harder to do. So TMA arch wires is easier to do this kind of band. And here is. What we do, I use, uh, I always, it's something important too, also something important. I always use steel ligatures for that. I always use steel ligatures for dealing with bands. Because if you use the, uh, the, the plastic ligatures, you will lose uh, effectivity of the, lig of the band. Because the ligature, as we know, it has the relaxation. It loses its force within two hours, days, and so you won't correct uh, nicely your your situation here. So another thing you must you, you would like to do here in a situation like this is a soft IPR between incisors here in order to not avoid this kind of movement. So a slight IPR with uh, I, I do it manually. So I do this slight IPR in the situation in order to to get get this free movement of the teeth of the tooth. Okay. This is how it goes. And after that, I go back to the uh, rectangular uh, uh, stainless steel arch wire in order to keep the band in position, okay? So here, how we do. Uh, uh, another thing, another tip important here. I always start with the, 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 the tooth that is more position. So I always start with the band, putting the band inside the slot because it's easier for us to do that. I put first the band, then I put other teeth, I put other teeth, uh, I, and I engage other teeth in the arch wire. So first, the teeth, they're in small position. Here, as you can see, and first with this teeth, this tooth, and after that with other teeth, okay? Uh, another thing that you can do in order to avoid this band is do a free rotation with a chain, for example. In this case, I saw that this patient, this is a case that was treated in one of our courses, this tooth was very bad positioned. And what we did in this situation is just 
And in this case, I did the rebounding because it was too much movement to do. And I did the rebounding more measure in this canine and also in this canine. So uh, it was a very, uh, this patient was already in this uh, stainless steel arch wire. So I didn't want to go back in my arch wire sequence. What I did here is just to put a chain and keep it freely to do the rotation. Always doing a slight IPR, mesial and distal to the tooth I want or the teeth I want to change the position, to, to rotate, okay? In this case, in, within two months, we had the correction. And now that is already correct, I can do the right sequence. I can go back, I can go to, to, to my, my, my arch wire, just keeping the wire straight, but with the tooth or teeth already corrected, as you can see here. So in, this is another solution. I, I like to call uh, this kind of thing my orthodontic solutions. So this is another solution that I teach to my students and it uh, works nicely sometimes, okay? So we have it here, measure the positioning of the bracket and the chain uh, like gated directly to this measure portion. And of course, we have to have this patient coming back to our office every month. So sometimes you do it much, even though we know that this chain here lose, loses its power, loses its force with time, it keeps a certain amount of force that can go further than you, than you would want, that you can do more uh, correction than you want. So this patient has to go to your office every month in order to you uh, check if it is okay, okay? So here it's correct, already corrected, position is already corrected, and now we can move on. Uh, another tip here for the position of the canine bracket is to put it more visual. I think I saw, I said it before, you put it more visual because sometimes, especially in the lower arch, this canine is wide, uh, it's much, much wider than the lateral incisor. So when you put a arch wire and you don't have this uh, difference in the inside the, the, the bracket base, and sometimes you don't have it, you have this kind of situation occurring, like this that I'm showing you now. The major portion of the, it's the, the canine goes in and the uh, lateral incisors goes out. So in order to avoid this, what you can do is just to position your bracket of the canine bracket, the canine bracket more mesial. So this is going to do this compensation uh, already during this, the arch wire sequence, okay? So you can do this correction without the need of doing this kind of band or this kind of solution that I showed you before. Second order bands, I love to do this. This is something that I do almost every day in my office. Why to do that? Because we miss a lot our position of the lateral side, for example, during the bony uh, phase of our treatment. Sometimes you see the crown of the lateral incisor, we try to put it in the long axis of the lateral incisor, bracket on the long axis of the lateral incisor, and we just miss that. And so we have to do this correction during treatment. So I'd like to do, I, I, I love to do this kind of bend. It is very effective indeed. And we do this correction like this. First thing here is to correct, is to do the up bend. And the same thing that I showed you before, I put my, my finger in the measure portion of the arch wire, I put the plier here, and I go up first, okay? I go up first, and then I have to go down. Same thing as the for, uh, Z, the first order Z band, same thing here. We have to keep the angulation in the active part of the arch wire. So we go down now, keeping the angle, that because this angle is what's going to change the position of the bracket. So we have to keep this angle. Uh, the, 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 large, the bigger the angle, the heavier the force it is. So we have to first fabricate light angles and then we go on in our arch wire sequence and do it in the increasing of this angulation and these bands. So first we have to construct, we have to fabricate a slight angle, a slight band, a light band, and then we go doing this uh, increasing on the band during the sequence of the arch wire. So 
uh, responding, I think, some questions. I start the band with the 016 stainless steel. It's not a good arch wire to start the band because it's very light and sometimes you don't have the ability to do it, to, to put it horizontal in the, the, the glass slab. And if you don't have the enough ability to do that, you will start at the 018 arch wire, okay? I do not start with rectangular arch wires. Why not? Because they are too stiff, because they are too rigid for that. So I do this sequence always increasing the band, increase the band that I put in the first, uh, in first place, like in 16, 016. I increase in 018, I increase in it in 020, and I use, just in order to, to clarify this, and I use the, the slot 22 for 30 for that. I, use, I always use the 22, and I go to the 20 uh, stainless steel with a wider, wider band. So when I get in the rectangular arch wire, the rectangular arch wires, I'm already uh, having a, 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 a correction of this angulation. So we don't have to do a very stiff, a very rigid band for that, okay? And here we have the finishing of this band now. And another thing, always check this. Always check, check the horizontal portion of the arch wire. Because if you don't do that, you are going to make bands different from what you want. Like, for example, step up or step down bands in neighboring tooth, neighboring teeth, I'm sorry. So this is what we have to do. We have to check. We have to check the arch wire contour and you have to check the horizontal, the horizontal position of the mesial and the distal portion of the arch wire. We just have the band here, bothering here, the horizontal position of the arch wire. Okay? Just think so hard. So, always check, always check. This is what you're going to see when you do a very beautiful band. And this is how we do the band. Always the same thing with my finger and visual and go down, then go up or up and down if I want to uh, make another band. Here we go down and we return to the contour of the arch wire going up again. So this is how it goes. This is our band. And before you insert the band, you have to do this. You have to check the amount of force you're going to put inside the arch wire, inside the slot of the bracket, because sometimes it's too much. And you have to check the horizontal portion of the arch wire after and before the bend, okay? So what we want is to generate a soft couple here in order to do this correction. So always do this. Before you insert the arch wire inside the slot, inside the bracket, you check if it is Passive in the neighboring teeth. Passive to the neighboring teeth, okay? So this is how we do in this situation, as you can see here, the, uh, we needed to do this closure, the space closure here, because this patient didn't want to have this uh, tooth uh, increased with compost. So in this situation, I told him, if you want, we can fix it by angulation of those teeth to lateral incisors, and you will close the space, but, the tooth, the lateral incisor, is going to be more tipped and more angled visually. Okay, okay, this is uh, another orthodontist. I, I always show this, this case on my colleagues because they, they allow me to do this. And this is how it goes uh, with the correction of the angulation. Not exactly correction, but uh, increasing the angulation in order to close the space. As we know, a rectangular, it occupies, it occupies more space when it's tilted, when it's angulated, okay? So this is how we do, and I'm going to show you now the graphics for that. So sometimes we have this situation here. We have two roots touching on each other, and this, as we know, we can't, do it, we can't uh, keep this way, because we, if we keep this way, we may either have root resorption and reopening of the space because they are touching here. So we have to do this correction with this, this band. Of course, you can do, as I showed you that hammer in the beginning, 
I'm just showing you another two to correct. Of course, you can do the rebounding thing. You can rebound those uh, brackets, but especially with uh, this kind of bracket here, that it's a sapphire bracket, you, would, you won't want to do this because first, it's expensive, and second, you may have to do a uh, removal of the animal when you do this kind of uh, removal. So this is the case. And after that, I had to uh, go to the, the, the night tire trial just in order to do a soft intercuspation. And here we have the result, okay? Here I have a picture from a, a student, a former student of mine, which uh, uh, sent this picture to me and she allowed me to show this picture. And she told me uh, in this picture, you were absolutely correct. I didn't check, I didn't check the horizontal portion of the arch wire. And when I put the arch wire, I had the extrusion of teeth and intrusion without the need for that, without wanting that. So this is uh, something that we have to, to keep in mind. Always check before we insert the arch wire in the neighboring teeth if they are passive, if the arch wire is passive passive, not up or down in the teeth, okay? Another situation where we use this kind of uh, uh, band is uh, for do this kind of uh, removing the teeth from the, removing the roots from the position of putting or inserting a uh, uh, implant, for example. Here we have a situation where we, do, we did the, uh, the opening of the space and when we do that, let me show you in this video here. I put all this presentation in video, guys, because another time when I was doing this presentation, uh, many times it stuck because of the amount of image it has. So I did in video because so so I'm explaining because this is going faster than it would go if I didn't put it in the video. So here we have the opening of the space, as you can see. But when we do this. We do uh, this uh, line of action far from the center of resistance of the tooth or teeth, and we do the angulation. So what can we do here? We can either do a uh, uh, angulation of the brackets during bonding, and if it's not enough, we can do this. We can do this uh, divergent Z second order band. Divergent because they are diverging the roots. Okay. So this is the situation where we use. Uh, this kind of band. Uh, since I treat many patients, many adult patients, I have to do this kind of situation too much in my office, many, many times in my office, okay? So we have it here, the space closed, the space open, and after the correction of the roots and the, the, the implant in position. So this is the Z, the second order Z band. Love it, I love it. Hope you do it in your practice too. Uh, another band that we use much is the intrusion extrusion band. Uh, AJ, let me ask you something, my friend. AJ, uh, how much time do we have? We, we do have a time. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. <laughs> but I'm worried it's, with you. It's, uh, it's 7 15 here in India. So, yet uh, time for okay. dinner. Uh, there's still time for dinner. And uh, the <laughs> okay. Indians take uh, dinner a little later than uh, what you guys take it. So don't worry. Okay. okay. And we okay. are enjoying so, your uh, talk. Okay. Uh, 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 by the way, if you try, if you want to, to interrupt, do it uh, whenever you want, because uh, questions, if you want to, to, to make questions or people question, please, you can interrupt and, and I, I am, I am answering okay? on your behalf. If I find a difficult question, I would definitely. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. So we are a team here. Thank you. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, so intrusion or extrusion bands, what we have here. So this is a situation that we use much when we have the intercuspation. We do extrusion or intrusion bands in order to align the, 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 gingival, the gingival margin, of course, but the, 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 the margin, the, uh, how do you say it? The tips of the, 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 the teeth and the, the uh, point of contact of the teeth. So we do this kind of extrusion or intrusion bands in one tooth or in a group of teeth 
in order to do this intercuspation. This is very common. But we do it in other situations. We also have to do this in situations like this, for example. When we do the slow extrusion of our tooth uh, or teeth, there is, uh, has a, a, a fracture, for example, uh, or it has a defect, a bone defect. This is a slow extrusion when we have a fracture. We do a rapid extrusion in order to do the extrusion without the periodontal support. In this case, for example, we wanted to do the extrusion, bring the periodontal support with, uh, uh, together with the movement. So during this extrusion, this low extrusion, we can do this correction of this periodontal support, either gingival and bone defect, okay? So in this situation, we go increasing, we go increasing this kind of band. What we do is to the extrusion, always begin with a half millimeter extrusion band, and we go increasing the band when we go at changing the wire changing the wire from a 016 to 018 to 020, and go changing the wire and increasing the uh, amount of the band, the height of the band, okay? So 0.5 millimeter go down, and it goes with the periodontal support, as you can see here, as it can, this is shown here, and we go down and we go removing the excess, and in the end, at the end of the treatment, at the end of the extrusion, we will have a better rate between the, uh, the, 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 the crown of the teeth, the crown of the tooth, and the uh, root inserted in bone, okay? Because we remove the excess, the excess, okay? So this is something that we do. I do it often because in my office, as I told, I, I, I see many adult patients, so I many times have to do this kind of, of uh, procedure. So this is the slow extrusion. Now we go with uh, a case that I treated this way. And this is a very polemic case because may, may, you may think that, why did he do like this? Why didn't he just put the implant in position, uh, as people say. But as orthodontists, I know that you know that this class two that we have here, it has to be tackled some way. What is the way, which is, the way we prefer to do this, distalizing those teeth and inserting implants after that in the central, uh, two central incisors, because those two central incisors were lost. It has a, a fracture, it has a, a, a trauma against it, and we, we would have to uh, remove it somewhat, sometime. So what we did was to do the extrusion, the slow extrusion of those two teeth. And when the, uh, the, the, the bone was enough, was sufficient there, we had the opportunity to close the space, putting lateral on place of the central incisor, the canine on the place of the lateral incisor, and the premolar in the place of the canine. Why did we do that? Because this patient was a class two. Either we had the option to do the distalization and do the implants here, or the mesialization, same work for us. Which one would you do if it were you? Okay, I know, I know. I, before I were this, this patient, I would prefer that. And we asked him, it may be a long time treatment, but we can do that, we can do it together. We want to do that, we want to do this right. He told us, I'm, I'm already prepared to do the implant. So if you do the avoid the implant, I'm, I will be satisfied. So what we did here is that low, slow extrusion, and this patient was aware that with time he would lose his lateral incisor, it's a possibility too. We have to be very clear to our patients, with our patients, and so we put the central incisor, lateral incisor in the place of the central incisors. It tends to, uh, to, uh, uh, to support the, the force because we, it will be split, it will be, uh, we, we will put a split together to put all those teeth together at the end of the treatment. So it tends to uh, 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 support that force, but it's a possibility to lose with time. So this patient is aware of that, but the treatment went very well, and uh, we are in the finishing phase of the treatment. We couldn't finish because of this, this quarantine period, but his, his patient is finishing treatment right now. Here we have before. We remove the braces to do 
this cosmetic uh, uh, composite here just in order to finish the case, okay? Very, very close to this finishing phase. So another thing that we do is the intrusion. Intrusion is very common in our treatment. For these kinds, for example, this kind of treatment, for example, we had to intrude the central incisors in order to do this correction. Even though in the beginning of the treatment, we did this kind of a special bonding, putting the bracts the bract of the central incisors lower, the upper central incisor, the bract were, were positioned lower, we didn't have enough correction. And as we are going to see now, we did this positioning, this, this special positioning, and you can see now that the tips are of the central incisor are up uh, compared to the lateral incisors, but not enough position, not enough position of the gingival margin. What can we do in this situation? We can do this gentle, uh, slight, light uh, uh, step up bend, intrusion bend. Okay, so here's the intrusion, and now we are satisfied with the result, and now we can do this composite to do the cosmetic and the central incisor to the central incisors and now we have the position of the gingival margin in a fair uh, in a better position compared to before treatment what we had before treatment so this is something that we do in order to correct i love this kind of treatment which uh, uh, joins the periodontal treatment and orthodontic treatment and i do it much in my office so this is the tip this is the tip that I'm going to give to you now concerning to this kind of band. When you do this band in a, a round wire, for example, and I started the round wire, when you do the intrusion band or the extrusion band, you will have a moment generated because the force, the line of action of the force is far from the center of resistance of the tooth or teeth. So what is going to happen is going to happen what you want, which is extrusion plus a, a movement that is generated by the moment, bringing the crown uh, inward towards palatal, uh, palatal, uh, towards palatal. And sometimes, most of the times, we want to avoid this. So we have to, to, to do two bends. A step down, in this case, for example, a step down bend, and knowing that we're going to have a step, a step in bend because of the moment generated, we do a step out then, just in order to anticipate what is going to happen with the step down then. Hope you understand. So we have to do this band down and this band forward. But some people say, why don't we just use a rectangular wire for that? Because if you do the rectangular wire, you have to be aware of another thing that happens in this interrelationship between the rectangular wire and the slot of the bracket, which is the couple generated when you put a slot, when you put the, the, the rectangular wire inside the bracket, inside the slot. Let's see how it happens. If you have the position passive, if it's a very good position of this tooth, it's okay. It's better to use this kind of bracket, this kind of relationship, rectangular wire, rectangular slot, even though I don't like to do this because I do want to do a, a very light movement a very light movement in order to achieve the movement together of the periodontal stems, changeable margin and bone together. So I like to do with round wires. I don't like too much to use rectangular wires to begin with this kind of band. I use rectangular wires to keep this band, to keep the position, okay? And uh, by the way, we have to, to wait at least three months in order to have the, the, the renewal of the periodontal ligament, the periodontal fibers, and the, the bone growing, the bone uh, forming bone, and the apex of this kind of movement. So after doing the extrusion, you please keep it in position with a stiff wires for at least three months, okay? So we have uh, this other example here, using rectangular wire, and in this situation, okay, it will control, it will control the moment because it will generate a couple that counteracts the moment generated when you do the, intru the, intru the extrusion. So we have here the extrusion, the white, uh, white line. We have here the moment when this curved line, in this curved line, 
and we have during the extrusion the generation the the, the uh, happening here the couple that you can see which will generate a moment that will counteract the tendency of incli inclining this crown so this is okay this is a a, a, a hundred percent uh, uh, soft movement and right movement but let's see another situation with the rectangular wire think about a situation where you have and it's very common for us when you have a very inclined teeth uh, this inclination of this teeth the anterior teeth let's show just this tooth for example a central incisor this inclination doesn't match the inclination of the arch wire so if you are going to do this you have to twist the arch wire in order to achieve a passive torque, okay? So you have to do a real torque in the arch wire in order to do this kind of passive torque when it is inserted inside the slot, okay? If you do not do that, you will have two moments generated in the same sense, like this here. You will have the couple uh, that you generate here, you have the moment generated by the couple, created by the couple here, and you have the moment of the force of the extrusion. There will go the same way, the same direction that you have the moment of the couple. So we have two moments in the same direction. So this is very bad. You don't want have that to happen at all. So be aware when you do this kind of movement with a rectangular wire. Please check before we insert the rectangular wire inside the slot if you have a passive torque a relative passive torque okay so if you don't please manage that because it's going to do this and you do not want to do this because if you have this you have you have a resorption and you have a very uh, 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 quick uh, bow loss and we can do this kind of bend in the the, a region, a, a, a whole region, a whole portion of the wire, not just one tooth, which I, cho I showed before. And uh, in this situation, when you want to do this arch wire, uh, this sequence of step down or step up uh, bends, uh, same thing here, we have to check before, and you can do this kind of extrusion. This situation here, I wanted to do this soft curve of the tips of the central and lateral incisor in order to match the curvature of the lip, the lower lip, which we know that's beautiful, the arch wire, the, the smile arc that we uh, are aware of. Uh, intrusion of just one tooth, uh, like for example, when you have the open bite, and this open bite is due to a, a premature contact between the second molar, the second upper and lower molar, and this is something that you can do with this kind of band, a step down band, okay? A step down band. And in this situation, if just, this is just a problem, because sometimes it's not just, 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 just this problem, but when it, this is the sole problem, you can solve this with this kind of intrusion, okay? We have a step down band. And for that, I always say to my students, you have to use a convertible to in the first molar always because you don't know if you have to you you need to do a bend after the molar so in this situation we always use in my clinic in my my, my for to my patients and in my uh post graduation program in our specialization program here in salvador what we do is always put a convertible tube to the first molars always because you don't know if you have the possibility the need for doing a kind of bend after the moment. So we always do uh, the positioning of a convertible tube. This is the band, this is the convertible tube after removal of the, the cap. So the cap was removed here, and now we have something related to bricks. We have to tie it to the, uh, the, the arch wire. With, uh, I prefer to use steel ligature for that. So here we how we do, uh, and this is a situation where you did this kind of band in order to remove this uh, premature contact. And this is how we do, it's a very easy way to do this kind of band. First, 
Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This is a band. I'm not, not, not the same band. Now I'm showing you a, uh, a loop, a L loop or boot loop, which some people call boot loop, where we have the possibility of doing this kind of intrusion or extrusion with more flexibility of the arch wire. Sometimes this band is too stiff for inserting in some kind of teeth or tooth. And we do this kind of more inter-bracket availability of, uh, of wire for, in, for increasing the flexibility and for uh, lowering the force delivered by the system. So in this situation here, we have the, we, we are doing this L loop. And here it is how it, this is done. Don't have much time to explain, unfortunately, but this is how we do and how we use it. Let's see a clinical case where we did this kind of a loop. And here is a cross bite, posterior, unilateral posterior cross bite, treated with cross elastics. After this, those elastics, the intercuspation elastics were used. And here we have the detail I wanted to show you. This is the L loop, the simple L loop that was used in order to intrude and to put this tooth, this second molar towards lingual. As you can see here, it was still in an edge to edge position. And after the, the, the L loop, it was correct uh, going lingually to, to, towards lingual and uh, downward. So intrusion and going lingual together, okay? This is the L band. Some people call it boot band because of its, its form. And here is it how it goes. Another tip for you here is to, um, to fabricate this band, is to make this band uh, thinking about its activity. When it closes, when it goes to its position, the best thing to do is to put the band closing its horizontal component. So like you see here, when it closes, it is more effective because it goes against the, the, the band. So it goes further, it is more effective, mechanically speaking, when you close the band, when it's active. Like here, as you can see, the horizontal portion, the active portion of the band closed in this movement, okay? So it is more effective. Just a tip for you, it's one of the laws of bag, uh, 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 loops, one of the laws of the bag loops is to close when it's active, okay? So we can do this kind of correction with this kind of band. Uh, and you can do, of course, if you want to do go, go, down, go towards buccal or towards lingual, you can do this correction, this over correction in the distal portion of your loop, like this here. Here, so here we go. And this is how it goes. A uh, simple loop is another loop that we use frequently here uh, because sometimes the night high wire, as I told you before, it is not enough to do this correction. That it doesn't have the correct stiffness to do this correction. So we can do both the uh, first order Z band to do this correction, or we can do this that is for me much better in the lower arch. The, the, this, this distance between brackets here is too close, too short to put uh, like a, a rectangular, uh, like rectangular arch wire with a Z, first order Z band, for example. So what we do here is do this loop in order to do more flexibility, to give more flexibility to the arch wire. In this situation, and this is a very interesting, uh, it's a very interesting, example of how things go in the internet, in the middle of social media, social media. When I put this case in the social media, there are people saying, oh, why it, it works better with a rectangular wire. And at, at the other side of the discussion, people saying, oh, this, uh, in this situation, I would put more loops in order to increase the inter distance, in order to increase the availability of, of wire uh, between brackets. So it's very strange because people say, do this way or that way. For me, this is my way to do. And uh, this is how, how things go for me. I don't think it's necessary to do 
more loops, at least at this amount of displacement of the teeth, although those tooth, those teeth, I'm sorry. And I never use rectangular wire for this kind of correction because I think it's too much. But it's me, this is me. You can say, no, but you're wrong. You know, I always do rectangular. Uh, I work just with bioprogressive and I always do rectangular wires. Or you know, they say, no, I, I, I always lose loop for that. Uh, extra loops, I mean, extra loops for that because I think I, I need less force and more flexibility. It is okay. This is just the way I do. So uh, it works for me. I, I think it's very interesting here, as you will see. I overcorrect the band in order to do the, the same thing that we do in a first uh, first order band, Z band. So more mesial and more uh, uh, buccal, more buccal in the mesial portion and more lingual in the distal portion in this specific case here, which we, I wanted to do the rotation, the derotation of those these tooth. And here we have the, uh, the need for it's like a very, very, very uh, discreet IPR here in order to allow the teeth or the tooth to rotate, okay? Not having the, it blocked during the rotation. And this is how I do. And this is the correction. Okay, okay. And this is uh, the, the detail of this, this loop. In position and here the graphics how we do first open the space yes you can use the same band the same loop to open the space you can spread your legs and you do this kind of uh, push against the neighboring teeth and just have this uh, the, the position of the, the the bracket you can put it together and you have at the same time the opening of the space and the correction of the rotation but I don't have good uh, results doing that. So I prefer to do first the opening with a coil spring, the opening with a compressed coil spring, and after that, immediately I put this kind of uh, loop. Why immediately? Why is that that important? Because this loop, it works as a uh, uh, space uh, maintainer. It works as a space maintainer. It keeps pushing the neighboring brackets because uh, they want to go back to the position, uh, especially if you do the opening and immediately try to push uh, the, 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 teeth, the tooth to, to its position, it will close the space again. So you can use this kind of uh, loop uh, with two benefits. First, do uh, this gentle rotation of the lateral side in this case and to keep the space. So it has these two, uh, two um, specific situations here and how it goes uh, this is the loop laid on and this is how we do as you can see if i go to a desert island we just wire and a bird beak i'll do much <laughs> many many bands i just use it for bands uh, here the importance here is to keep the horizontal portion of the arch wire in a line okay and you have to check it always and here is the correction that I want. Mesial, it goes uh, buccally, and distal go lingual. Buccal, mesial, distal go lingual. Okay, so this is how I do. But here, as you can see, I keep the line of the arch wire. So this is another example of the same band. Here, first activation. Here we have the correction but not completely corrected. So I do another activation or I check the activation. It is still active. Again, we do this gentle uh, IPR in order to, to free space for it, for do the rotation or the rotation in this case. Okay. So uh, here we go to the last part of our, of our uh, webinar saying something about torques. Uh, what is a torque? Torque is just the torsion of the arch wire. Torque is just the torsion of the rectangular arch wire when you want to do something. What something is this? Keep the, the, the tooth in its position or teeth, change it going with an inclination, or 
restrain the inclination of those teeth when you have another force acting against those teeth. So we have the passive, we have the active, and we have the resistant uh, torque in orthodontics. When you do edgewise, when you use edgewise brackets, okay, not our dear uh, colleague brought to us, Engel. When you do, uh, when you use it, we always have to do, since the beginning, the real torques on the arch wire in order to achieve the passive torque, which we call the relative passive torque in teeth or brackets, okay? So why is that? Because uh, edgewise, they are not, they are not uh, program, pre-programmed brackets. They are standard, so they have the same base for all the teeth. So we have a very inclined teeth, and we put a edgewise bracket here. We'll have to do torque in order to keep the position because the, the angulation of the slot will be different from the angulation of the rectangle wire if we do not do the torsion, and this is important for us. So in brackets, in edgewise brackets, always. And I started with edgewise brackets, so I always check. This is something that I kept in my mind during all these years of orthodontics. I always check, even though I'm using straight wire appliance, even though I'm using self-ligating self appliance, I always do this checking before I insert the rectangular wire to arch wire inside this one, okay? So, what did the straight wire appliance did uh, to us? It uh, uh, spared time for us, spared, Chair time for us. Why? Because it comes with a pre-angulation, with pre-inclination, with ins and outs, and we have pre-rotation if we want to use it in canines and first, second premolars. I don't know. I don't use it at all. But I use straight wire appliance almost in 90% of my cases. Why is that? Because it is less time consuming in my office. I don't have to do all the time bend, even though I love bends. I know it's time consuming. So I use a band when I have to use it. I don't use a band just to practice. I use a band when I have to use it. I use a loop when I have to use it. When I know that it will go to uh, help the biomechanics, okay? So our, uh, uh, straight wire appliance, pre-programmed pre -programmed appliance, they consume less time for us in our office. You have those appliance, those brackets with pre-angulation. And I just use standard brackets. And there's a, need, uh, there's a reason for that. Why? Because I feel that every time that I have to put the, the rectangular arch wire, I have to check. I don't use class two brackets, class three black brackets. I just use standard brackets because I, uh, I obligate myself to check every time. And this is very important for me. So we have the possibility of not using the torque in the arch wire because it is already embedded inside the brackets with the pre-programmed brackets. So sometimes we do not have the need for doing this kind of torque. But most of the time, when you're doing the retraction in class two cases, which are the majority of the cases that we treat in our uh, offices, we have to do torque. We have to adjust the torque to control the movement, okay? So this is how I see pre-adjusted arch wires. And it's not something new. Here we have Lawrence Andrews, which told us the story. We see many people teaching how now in universities that you don't need to do at all bands, you don't need to do loops because you have a sequence of arch wires, magic sequence of arch wires that goes from the beginning to the end without the need of doing this kind of bands, boring bands, or torques or loops. It's not correct. That man himself told it to us when he told this. If you go on a long journey, you don't walk all the way. You fly most of the way, then you take a taxi and then you walk the final 100 yards. What does it mean? It means that his tool, the tool that he magically gave us in the 70s, it is not the end of the treatment, you know? It's just the long journey. It's just the play. Then you have to walk the final 100 yards. How do we walk? With bands, with elastics, with loops, with everything that we have in our, our, our momentary in order to control it, okay? Going further. 
um, trying to, to, to do it inside two hours uh, time, but you can ask me if you That's want to. That's fine. That's uh, fine. To... That's fine. fine. Carry on. Carry on. We are enjoying. Okay. Thank you very much, my friend. Uh, so here we have the uh, torques that we know that there are. There are many prescriptions in orthodontics. Here in Brazil, we have kind of 20 or 30 prescriptions. I don't know. I, I don't even know how much we have, how many we have. But we know we have much prescription. We don't need them because we have a different prescription for movement of the teeth and from the prescription of the finishing treatment. For example, if you are using a prescription for class two, you have to understand if that prescription was thought for finishing or for movement. Some prescriptions are for finishing and those prescriptions have less torque, less positive torque for class two in the upper arch. And those prescriptions for movement has more positive torque because they are there. This torque is inside the bracket because it tends to counteract the moment generated during the retraction. So we have what we call here in you know, uh, edgewise rect, we have the resistant torque for this. So we have to understand that these torques are not for the entire population. We have to understand that we have to individualize our treatment. And in order to do that, we need to understand torque. We need to deal with torque. We need to deal with bands. This is a more important thing that I have, that I want to show you today. Torques are always necessary if you want to individualize your treatment, especially in cases where you're doing this uh, sagittal movement of tooth, of teeth, I'm sorry. So this is very important for us to keep in mind. So in Edgewise, as I told you, it's my, 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 my school was Edgewise, we have to understand, we have to understand real torque, which is maybe neutral, and you have zero torque in the, the wire, may be positive when you have this kind of torque. Uh, and we can check it in the plier. When we grab this wire, we can check it. We can check its passivity or its activity, just grabbing the arch wire, the region we want to check. And you can see if it's horizontal, if it's passive, if it's the same line at the center of the plier. So we have here the neutral, the neutral torque and we know that there is this relationship between the arch wire, the torsion on the arch wire, and the torsion or the inclination or the torsion, the inclination of the brackets. So this is how we see prescription in orthodontics. They want to give for us less time, chair time. Huh? It is important for us. If you want to use this, not, not wrong, you can use class two prescriptions, class three prescriptions. It will work for the majority of the cases. But you have to keep in mind that many, many of the times you are treating patient sagittally, you have to do this kind of adjustment. Please keep it in mind. Even though you have the prescription for classes two, for class, class twos, for class three, threes, you will have to do this adjustment because it was not, it's not universal. It's for uh, the majority of people that you're going to treat. So we have to check, always check the, the, if you have a passive or an active or an active relationship between the rotation of, of your arch wire and the inclination of your teeth or the inclination embed on your brackets, okay? So this is very important. And we know that there is all these uh, vari variations uh, in, 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 uh, within the bracket, inside the bracket, we can have a wider bracket, we can have a light, uh, uh, narrower, narrower uh, arch wire, we can have a not well fabricated bracket. So all those variations, all those variables, they can, they may uh, change our treatment plan. So when we know this relationship, when we know there is a play between bracket and arch wire, for example, when we know that we have to deal with that, when we are, are aware before doing the treatment that this kind of uh, variables are present in our treatment, we are always alert on what's going to go on uh, in our treatment. So this is important for us. We have the wire stiffness, we have the clearance or the play, we have the slot side, the slot dimension, 
the wire size, we have many, many variables that can uh, modify our relation during treatment, okay? So in my case, for example, I do the retraction, I always do the retraction with a 19, uh, 1925, because I use the 2230. I always use the 1925 because it's, uh, we have less play inside this lot. So if we do this retraction with, for example, a 17 in a 22, you have a play of up that can be up than 20 degrees of play. In other words, you're going to lose inclination before you have some kind of reaction inside the bracket or what we have a kind of control inside the bracket. So this is what we call play or clearance inside the bracket. So I prefer to use a wider, uh, a thicker uh, arch wire in order to control this during retraction because I had very bad experience doing otherwise using lighter wires. So I prefer to use this kind of wire. And you may be asking yourself now, but what about the, uh, the, the posterior region? What about the, the difficulty that we have when you do this kind of sliding mechanics in the posterior region? Because we will have, what do I do for that? In order to achieve this slight, uh, this uh, soft uh, uh, sliding mechanics, I trim the arch wire, then I do the polishing of this arch wire. So this is what I do in order to, to achieve a better control during the retraction using the sliding mechanics. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> this is what I do. And for example, I'm just using an example of this here, what happens when we lose inclination. Sometimes we lose this inclination and we have the contact before correcting the class one and canine position, as you can see here, it's not already correct, and you have the contact. What do we do? Now we have to correct it. So for that, we use active torque. In this case, a active positive torque in order to correct the inclination. So after the inclination was achieved, I now can go on with the retraction using for that a resistant torque. In other words, keeping the angulation. Sometimes people think, oh, if I put a hook, a higher hook for that, will I have a more controlled inclination? If you use a kind of relationship between bracket and arch wire, yes, we will have, you will achieve this kind of control. But for that, you have to do a complete filling of the, the slot in order to have first, uh, one body together, six anterior teeth, four anterior teeth, one body. And se second, stiffness of the arch wire. So when I use this kind of situation, as you see here, and I don't use, uh, for example, uh, a full size, few, a full size wire inside the slot, sometimes I still have this inclination loss, that I lose inclination. And I have to do this kind of break, this kind of, uh, torque that I'm doing here. This is the way I do torque. I do the, there are many ways to do torque actually. This is just another way to do torque, my way to do torque. And now we have the torque done and we have to check the torque, check the torque. Before inserting it, we have to check the torque, put the wire inside the slot and see what happens in the other part. So this is how we check the real torque with the plier. It goes up, so if you put it in the upper upper arch, it is a positive torque. So here, as you can see, I'm checking, and here I'm, I'm seeing that, yes, we have a positive torque, a positive relative torque. Not just the torque, the real torque inserted in the arch wire, but the relative torque. The torque that is felt uh, to uh, the teeth feel, the torque that is uh, in the teeth, okay? And here now we have clearance enough to continue with our retraction. And now we continue our retraction with this, this torque. So in order to do this, this is my way. What I do, I do, uh, I use a 
0, 20, 21 for 22 in a 22 30 uh, slot. 0, 21, 22 uh, arch wire in the anterior region. You don't even need to have this continuity, continuity of the arch wire to the posterior region because we have one body, we have just one body, which is in this situation, the eight teeth together. And here I did the retraction without the need of the sliding mechanics, and we have a better control. So this is how we, I do when I do this kind of uh, retraction with the long hook, okay? For finishing now, I'm um, just uh, showing case of, showing a case of a, a need for a individual torque. This situation is very common in orthodontics. We have probably the teeth, and once we go with the lateral incisor that was blocked palatally, we go with the crown, but not with the root together. So sometimes we have to correct the root. As you can see here, it was correct, the crown was correct, but it wasn't correct, the, the, the position of the root, which was achieved by individual torque, individual root uh, buckle torque. Root buckle torque, it implies palatal crown torque. It's the same thing. So here is how we do. We do, I do this with uh, those kind of uh, pliers, female and male individual torque pliers. And this is how I do. And after that, I'm gonna check if I have the torque that I need, the real torque. As you can see, a neutral real torque in the other part of the arch wire. And the torque is concentrated in the part of the, the, the the, teeth, the tooth that I want, the break that I want. And we have to go uh, check this. Here we have the same, another situation, same thing. We have a displaced lateral incisor with the crown more buckle inclined, more buckly inclined. And now we're going to do the correction. How do we do that? Individual buckle root torque, individual buckle root torque. And for that, again, little IPR, uh, little amount of IPR between the neighboring teeth, okay? And here, before inserting, here after inserting, and torque takes time, the three teeth, the three magical teeth, so we have to wait, and you do not do this torque in just one time. You can do this torque in two or three times. You can go on and on, uh, increasing the torque every time your patient comes to your office. As you can see, but you don't need to do every month. Please don't do that. Torque is, or, is already there and it's still there. You won't lose. So please do it every each uh, two or three months. Okay? And then you have the correction uh, before and after the correction. Guys, I think uh, we reached our final uh, topic of our presentation today. As you can see, it's not possible to, to do much more than that. And same things with other, just let me show just one more video here, just to finish. <laughs> I love to talk, huh? Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is a situation that is very common, a canine <laughs> that is blocked. When you do the distraction of the canine, sometimes it, when it's palatal displaced, it comes with its uh, crown. You have first to open the space, of course. After space open, you can put it like this. I use it too much here. It's, it's a space maintainer because I can do this without friction. I can put the wire directly to the, the, the bracket or the, the tube. And then we have to correct the positioning of the root. So this is something that we do very often too. And here we are checking and doing the torque. You can either do this with TMA or uh, stainless steel arch wires. I prefer to use stainless steel because I know the difficulty that I have when I use TMA for dealing with torques and I use stainless steel arch wires, okay? And here the case finished before and after and uh, after correction. My friend AJ, I'm sorry for taking too long. No, for... that's fine. That's fine. It was <laughs> really amazing. Place. It was good. Uh, 
super thank you very like much. Uh, as you had been uh, i think trained uh, in exclusive standard age wise yes the first uh, first time i i i went to my post graduation uh, program in sao paulo the only my, my mentor omar gabriel i i love this his work uh, my mentor he used just edgewise appliance in his office and i worked with him for four years so wow. we used exclusively edgewise at that time of course like, with time likewise we uh, I, I was being trained in exclusive bags in my post graduation so we know yeah. how to do like when you were bending you know it was the 139 applier 139 number which you said i still my do, do, you, call, do you call it 139 too do you call it also 139 oh good my know. timers my timers call it 139 youngsters okay. might call it uh, different they they call it as board beak or something else but we still call it as 139 yeah. And uh, and I I yeah. always uh, use only one plier one three nine for everything. I don't need mm -hmm. a ribbon arch plier. I don't need any other plier. One three nine is I would say it's an amazing plier. You rightly perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> uh, we have few questions. Can we take it? Okay, of course. Yeah, Please. because I answered almost nineteen questions, but few. Okay, what is the difference between a real and relative torque? That is what a question is. A real and a relative torque are the difference between them. This is the question. Yes. Okay, so let's say the real torque is the torque applied to the arch wire. Let me show you here. Is my screen still shared? Yes. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see. Okay. That. Let okay so let's differentiate it here we have here uh let's see a position well here let me put it here for you this is the real torque which you call neutral or, or no torque at all no torsion at all in this section of the arch wire when i do this here when i put this uh this this wire here inside the bracket if the bracket has the same this lock has the same angulation we will have a passive relative torque meaning neutral is this torque no torque in this arch wire and here we have the relationship between the neutral torque and the angulation or in this case inclination of this slot here so in the same situation here neutral torque and if we do now this kind of this kind of angulation of this bracket here, neutral torque here will apply a certain torque in this bracket and consequently in the tooth. So this is the relative torque. In this situation here, we have a neutral torque, a real neutral torque, and a relative positive torque. I'm sorry, negative torque. Why negative? Because when we insert this, this arch wire here, it tends to rotate this bracket and this tooth in this direction, which is negative. So we have the real torque is the torque present in the arch wire. The relative torque is the relationship between the real torque and the inclination of the slot of the bracket, which can be passive if the same, or active if it is not the same. Is it clear enough? I'm yes. sorry. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's absolutely clear. The question asks, uh, you said that, uh, what do you think about the idea that says canine zoot inhibits the movement of incisor, so n mass is not good option? So uh, the question mass retraction yeah question in, says mass retraction yeah uh. question ask uh, he wants to ask that canine root inhibits the movement of incisors so n can, mass is uh, not a good option that is what a question is do you do you okay, believe no. in n mass or do you believe in uh, individual retraction? i do no, I do a mass retraction. Let me make it clear. I'm sorry if it wasn't clear enough. But what I do is, when I do the canine retraction, 
I just do the canine retraction when I have crowd is deep on the anterior part of the arch. The incisor and the canines are crowded. So I do, uh, uh, in this case, extraction, premolar extraction, for example, and I do the canine retraction. Only the amount that is enough to do the alignment without the need for clearing the, the incisors. And after that, I go on with my sequence of arch wires. And after, when I reach the rectangular 1925, I do the torque and do the end mass retraction. So I do in two phases. If I need to, if I have, if I have in the case of the patient, crowded teeth, crowded teeth, I do the first the canine and then the end mass. In other situation, for example, when I have bimaxillary protrusion, I do not do the extraction and do the canine retraction. I just do the alignment sequence. And when I reach the 1925, I extract for, for, for example, first premolars and do the retraction of the six at the same time in mass retraction. Okay. Uh, the second question is, can we, can we incorporate uh, uh, the torque in entire anterior section from canine to canine using a tweed uh, plier? Yes, you can do that. Many people do this kind of thing. Put the torque and put two pliers and do the torque here, mesial or distal to the canine, and the other side, the same thing. I consider that more difficult to do. Right, I do right. it slightly doing this kind of uh, uh, twist in my wrist with slight movements in the anterior part of the arch wire. Because when I do this in just one time, when I try to remove the torque that is generated in the posterior part of the arch, sometimes, I lose the torque that I put in the anterior part of the arch wire. So I prefer to do this slight movements doing this in the anterior part, but it's possible. It's possible. I know that many people do this way. This it, is it just is, my it way. Is even, it is even better to even incorporate a little bit of uh, uh, intrusive uh, kind of uh, curvature also. That would also bring in a lot of torque as well, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, right. yeah no, it's right. Yeah, okay. Uh, there's a question by Dr. Pooja. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Dr. Pooja, can you just, I just allowed you to talk. Can you just ask a question? Hello, am I audible? Yes, you are audible, Pooja. Yes, yes, completely. Uh, it's a wonderful presentation, sir. Uh, since I myself was trained in standard edge bias, so we've been using a lot of loops and bends in the wires. So yes. all, I wanted to know, uh, in many of your cases, you have done intrusive and extrusive mechanics using these bends. And yes. in several of, uh, in one of your cases, you had done that video distal uh, movement of the lateral incisor uh, to close that fine space. Yes. My question is, how do you take care of the relapse part? I mean, have you seen any uh, uh, relapse in any of these cases? What do you use for retention in such a case? Thanks for your question. Very important for me to clarify that. I, it's very important for us to keep in position after you have uh, the, the correction that you wanted to, to have, to keep the arch wire in position, a stiffer arch wire in position because in three months, it, uh, the relapse occurs very rapidly, very quickly, if you don't, don't do this. And what I do use as a retainer when I do this kind of big move, movements in special tooth or a, a region or, or teeth, I use a fixed retainer and upper and lower arch, and I use it for at least six months. In the lower arch, I use three to three uh, for five years, and after that I remove it, and I use the vacuum four, uh, retainers for life, I say to my patients. That is, that is correct. Pooja, I hope it is uh, clear. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Pooja. Thank you. Yeah, uh, because of lack of time, we will not be able to answer all the questions. Uh, thank you, Professor Kleber, for such a wonderful presentation. And uh, I hope to see you soon for some other topic as well, because it was really great. So I hope you would accept our invitation to and, uh, and enlighten our Indian crowd as well. Uh, thank you. Time once, my friend. I'd like to thank you. Thank you for all the audience we had today. And uh, it was a pleasure for me to talk with, to, to all of you. I hope to do it in another time. Uh, I, hope, I hope thank it's, it's 9.30 a.m. there. What time it is? Yes. 
here's 11.45. 11.45, okay. You, you are at the yeah. Eastern Coast, right? So, okay. yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thanks once again, Professor Kleber, for accepting the invitation. Hope to see you soon. And stay thank safe, so all much. of you. You too, my friend. Bye-bye.